Good evening everybody, or should I say good afternoon, welcome back to Devils United, we're back with another show and we do have another transfer that's been confirmed, this time it's for the Manchester United women's team as they make their first signing of the season, Gemma Evans from Reading, we will be discussing her transfer, getting a bit more of a breakdown as the kind of player she is, uh, what I think of the signing with the club statement, of course. Plenty, plenty to discuss. Um, good evening, um, Reese. Thanks for coming in. Hope you are well. Hit the like, share, subscribe. Question I'm not over familiar with Gemma, Gemma, Evans as a player. What's her position and will she be a good signing also? Which player will be your biggest place competition? So, um, sh- it, I think to say, will she be a good signing going forward is pretty early to say because I was critical in the heat of Paris. I was critical of Rachel Williams and they did a great job. So, I'm not going to answer that one as of yet. A position is a centre back. She can also play as a striker. Uh, she was a striker in her earlier days, and then she went back into a centre back role. Played more there for Reading. Um, I think she's probably more of the two car uh, replacement more than anything, just because two car had left on a free from Man United. Uh, good evening. Good afternoon, Rafa. Thanks for coming in. Hope you are well. Didn't Evans play for Bristol and in the Welsh team? That is correct. Um, can Gemma F. Evans offer left footed centre back? Um, the thing is with um Gemma Evans, uh, she's the only left footed centre back at Man United, so there isn't really there compared to other centre backs. Even though there is a lot more centre backs who's better than her, she's the only left footed centre back. So that's something that could be offered. And as well as that, I think that helps out defensively for Hannah Blundell, uh, personally, in my opinion. It's 26 is a good age for a centre-back. You'd have to say, with the 26-year-old for a centre-back, it, it's a prime year, so that's how you've got to look at it. Uh, recently was Reading United got on a freak, that's correct. 39 appearances in the WSL in the past two seasons. Seems a decent record. Um, Hey there, Josh. Thanks for coming in. Hope you are well. I'm very well. Thank you very much. Um, I will keep the intro. I was looking at potentially changing it, but um, if you like it, I'll keep it. Um, Hey there, Chris. Thanks for coming in. Hope you are well. The best England top ever. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I was wearing it more because of who's recently signed for Man United. So I'll give you a clue of who that is on the back of my shirt. Hey there, Static. Thanks for coming in. Hope you are well. Russo. Russo and uh, Nido. Very good signing for Alessia Russo on a free. Um, I hope she's very, very happy there at Arsenal. Um, Maisie, it's a good sign for your team. Well done. Thank you very much, Static. Hey there, Chris. Thank you for coming in. Hope you are well. Uh, but it, I call you Chris. Hey there, Liam. Thanks for coming in. Hope you are well. I'm sorry if I called you Chris because I don't know why I've just said that. Hey there, Paul. Thanks for coming in. Hope you are well. Hey there, Luan France. Hope you are well. Thank you for coming into the chat. Uh, can't believe we signed Russo. It's a fantastic signing, especially on a free. Um, and there's plenty of competition in the Arsenal squad compared to ours, so uh, hopefully that will push her up uh, another level. May's always sensational in the footy top. Thank you very much, Rather. Um, so we will discuss um the first of all the statement that got released by Manchester United regarding uh, Gemma Evans. So. Uh, United women signed Gemma Evans. Uh, Manchester United are, are delighted to announce for signing of Wales international Gemma Evans on a permanent deal. The experienced sen- defender joins United after spells with former WSL sides Bristol and Reading and was ranked third highest in the WSL for shots blocked 19 in total in the last campaign with over 50 international caps. Gemma will link up with some fellow um, Welsh internationals of Hayley Ladd in Manchester, with whom she formed a centre-back partnership for her country. 
Gemma Evans said, it's a massive it's a massive honour to sign here. It's something I've dreamt about. The ambition of the club is which what brought me here. Seeing how well the girls did last year it was amazing. It's an unbelievable unbelievable feeling to be here now. The progression of the club is something I want to be on board with and help build on the amazing foundations here already here. Matt Skinner said, Gemma will bring wealth of experience to our playing squad and offer even more versatility to our playing style. Her international credentials and WSL experience will help us as we navigate multiple competitions. We are delighted to us uh, to welcome Gemma into our family. Polly Bancroft said, We're delighted that Gemma has chosen us to join Manchester United. Her defensive knowledge and overall understanding of the game will be invaluable to our squad as we compete for several fronts this year. Everyone at the football would like to welcome Gemma to Manchester United and the very best of luck in our Manchester United shirt. So, yeah, there's what uh, Gemma looks like in the uh, Manchester United shirt. Um... (sighs) So, it was a statement there what uh, both Polly... Matt Skinner, very, very happy with. Um, so, reading that statement, we know we got a run of three because I think quite a lot of players from Reading did go on a three. They have moved from full time to part time. So, that means there is going to be a lot of players who are needing to find jobs um, who are going to have to leave to different clubs if they're wanting to remain on to. Uh, into football um i do think though the statement it was partially incorrect just because they didn't mention another team that she did uh, which she was in in the wsl she was also with Yo- yoville town um i believe they're probably in tier three now um so that's mis- uh, misinformation there from the side 26, it's still, not that it's young, but it's at the right age. Because before Matt Skinner was to come to Manchester United, we was signing players who are, are quite young. So Casey Story was to develop him into fantastic players. A main example would be on a Baggio, uh, signed very young. We had one of the youngest squads in the WSL before Matt Skinner came in. And then we signed players like, Rachel Williams, we signed Diane Caldwell on loan. Um, so uh, we and we got the heat of Paris, who's a little bit older, but plenty of experience. Um, so yeah, that's I do agree, she does have definitely versatility. Um, especially that she can play as a striker, she can play um, as a centre back. I do think she is probably more preferred as that centre back option. Uh, especially knowing that she is one of the best at blocks. Um, let's see what people are saying in the chat as well. On a free, you can't argue with that. To be honest, rather, the majority of the signings Manchester United do usually make are on a free. I think it was only like two players last year out of all the plays we signed, uh, we actually got uh, bought. Uh, the only ones we actually bought was Nikita Paris and uh, Maya Letizia. We bought Maya Letizia for 50k, and I think Nikita Paris between 100 and 150k. All the other players like Rachel Williams, Lucia Garcia, um, Jane Riviera, uh, 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 was all bought on uh, a, a, was all on a free. I forgot that Lisa Nolson was also bought. So. Um, to be honest, we are tend to, we do tend to buy sign players who are on a free more than anything. Um, I was more surprised we didn't get our annual um West Ham signing just because we have picked up West Ham players for the last several seasons now. We picked up um uh we picked up Adriana Leon last season. Season before we picked up Martha Thomas. Season before that we picked up Jane Ross. So I thought we was going to get Lucy Parker. Uh, Arsenal win the FA Cup next year. That's all in my opinion. How good is Evans in your opinion? She's not bad. 
that's what I'm. That's how I'm gonna say she's not bad. Um, I do think she probably will be used, just knowing out the fact that we are gonna need the squad rotation coming into next season with the Champions League, with uh the league coming ahead. Um, and personally, we do need more competition for Billy Turner. That would be probably where she will play as that left-footed role. Um, is she good enough to play in the Champions League for me? Probably no. I, I will my hands up. I don't think she is. Uh, Champions League quality where I think she should be starting in the Champions League to get us to the next stages. I don't think that at all. I think she'll probably be more used there for the league, maybe the FA Cup, the Conti Cup, just so we've got a left-footed support there to help out Hannah Bundell. Um, I do think, though, however, the centre-backs was probably one of the least priorities right now because we needed full-backs. We needed a defensive midfielder to cover for Hayley Ladd, we definitely need the striker. So, um, I think probably the centre back at the moment was one of the least priorities. Polly Bancroft speaking, run for the hills. Left footed adds a, another option to United. That's if you don't have one. Yep, certainly we don't have um a centre back part. Uh, we don't have a left footed centre back. All the centre backs are right footed. Um, and I think, for me, that's not always the best idea to play two right-footed centre-backs just because there is times where you can get caught out on that left-hand side. We've seen that a lot with Millie Turner this season uh, when she's played as the left-footed centre-back. Um, you've not seen it there with Manion because she is more of an aggressive full-back compared to Millie Turner. And I do think Gemma Evans is pretty quick. She can be aggressive, which does help with Millie to say that's going to be used. Um, hey there, Ian. Thanks for coming in. Hope you are well. May Evans' partnership would be nice. Would I use that partnership? No. That's my opinion. I would not use that partnership as a start in 11. Um, out of the centre-backs we do currently have, I'd still probably keep it as Millie Turner. I'd have uh, Mannion. I wouldn't have Gemma Evans as that start in 11 centre-back. But knowing, for instance, that Matt Skinner is to use her, it's going to be most likely for the league. Uh, oh, no, wonder why you're wearing it. Well, you'll know for sure. I, I would turn around, but I can't be bothered. Um, what kind of a defender is Gemma Evans? Quick, aggressive type of centre-back. Um, and as I said, a, a left-footed centre-back as well. Didn't know you were alive, Mazer. It was just a last-minute thing, Daniel, to be fair. Uh, just because the announcement only got made probably about half an half an hour to an hour ago, so I, I wasn't actually planning on going live today. So as soon as I seen it, I just thought, yeah, I'll go for it. I'll go live. See, discuss the signing. Um, Maze, which teams would you play Evans against? The low block teams will probably be a, a better option. Uh, against the likes of Brighton, against the likes of Tottenham, um, they would be uh, the options I would personally go for. <laughs> Sorry, uh, if I was going to play into the lower stages of the Conti Cup and you've got Sunderland, you've got, uh, for instance, again, they're aggressive types and I think you, you need an experienced player on that pitch who's able to do that. Um, so that's who I would play you against. Um, it's good. We have a balance. Right CB, left footed LCB. Who did Devons play with before? Um, she played Reading. She's played Bristol. She's played Yeoville. I'll, I'll, I'll bring a Wikipedia page anyway, so so you can see. That is fair, Maze. I respect the partnership point of view. You okay, Maze? Bless you. Thank you. Uh, would Harry Maguire get into the women's team? I bet not, no. You need to look at it right. I know people here in the chat are saying, is Evans a good signing? Is uh, I would have Evans in a centre-back partnership. But you need to look at this. Right. Let's, let's just ask you all the question when I do say this. is: Do you think Manchester United should be signing relegated players. Let, let's just ask that question first. Should Manchester United sign relegated players? Because that has divided a lot of opinions uh, today on Twitter. So I'm going to put a poll in here 
when I do say this, um, United sign players. Yes. No. Right. So here it is. Should uh, Manchester United sign relegated players? Let's just see what people think in the chat. I put the poll in as well. Um, I'm not over familiar with her. You mentioned she could play as a forward. Was she any good playing there? I'm gonna hold my hands up. I've never seen her as a striker. Um, but based off what I'm looking at statistics wise, she looks like she couldn't score with an open barn door. So I, I presume probably no. Um, what a sneeze made you walk our dog up. <laughs> um, not for me. We need to aim higher and act like a big club. That's exactly what some people were saying. Now, you Liz, we shouldn't be looking at relegated players, especially knowing that we've recently we got into the Champions League for the first ever time. We should be aiming to get fantastic to world class players <clears throat> in the squad. Um, I know you're looking at the men's game and people go, well, Lavia from Southampton is a fantastic signing. Oh, my hands up. is a great signing. But you need to look at, is he worth 50 million as a relegated player? No. And I, I just think for me is, the problem is with Mark Skinner is when he has players signed from the likes of Reddings, the likes of Birmingham, ex-Birmingham players, he uses them. That's just the only problem. And th that just makes me think, if she's going to get used in the league, I, what I personally think she'll be used in, then I don't think she'd be good enough to be in that used 11. Because you're looking at like just Tukara, for instance, who recently left Man United on a free, who was in back-to-back -back champions, who was in the Champions League, who was the captain for France, but couldn't get a look in. Why, why, why was that? So, yeah. So let's... Yes, if the player is decent. If the player does the job, then yes. I'm a bit confused now, Niall. You said yes, then no. Um, Not all the time, but if the relegated player actually improves the position, I'm all for it. Every signing is a risk and a gamble. That's a very good point, Niall. Um, there are players that get relegated, still play good football individually. I mean, only if the player is quality. Value definitely dictates a conversation in the wrong way. Uh, yes, if a, not a relegated player at all, it's the team's game, not an individual game. So, let's change this conversation round then with why people aren't happy. Is, in the last five years, Gemma Evans, she has been relegated. What, one, two, three. let me just count it. One, two, three, four, five. Right, in the last three, six years, of football, she's been relegated three times. So let's let's ask this one. Would you want to sign a player who's been relegated three times in six years? Because a lot of people, as we've already seen with Harry Maguire, doesn't want him because he got relegated several times. So, as a player, would you want to... If you was just recently got to the Champions League, would you want to sign a player who's been relegated three times in six years? Let's see what people say with that question. Um, sorry, Maisie, I was flip-flopping. That's changing my opinion, contradicting myself. Um, hey there, Endsman. Thanks for coming in. Hope you are well. But the teams do, don't they? That's a very good point. The teams are the ones who get relegated, not the players individually. Nah, no chance from Endsman. That's why a lot of people aren't happy with this signing because she has been relegated. This player has been relegated three times in six years. Three different clubs she's been relegated out of. And now we signed her for the first ever, our first ever Champions League uh, co uh, competition. Um, I'm, very, I'm very well. Thank you very much. I appreciate you coming in. Um... Is that an England away top? Yeah, it's not this time round. It was the previous England top. Um, three times in six years is a bit, bit ask on a player. But again, I think the team environment is important. She's had three relegations, but that's not all on her. Mentor example, Aaron Ramsdale. 
<laughs> she's out there just to relegate teams for men's man. Um, so let's have a see with what Gemma Evans has also said regarding the situation of her um, being relegated from Reading because uh, she did talk about that. Um, she has said, I keep willing myself to perform. Reading Star opens up regarding the breaking personal loss. The Reading International is wanted by a number of WSL clubs following out of the end of her contract with relegated Reading, but the defender is focused first on honouring her grandmother. Um, so she said, we didn't stand the chance there, meaning at uh, Chelsea, um, no, but the 26-year-old international did. It was hard, but it was our choice. Sophie Ingle is a Welsher, and Chelsea deserved to win the title. And so on a personal level, I wanted to be respectful of that. I also wanted to support Soph in the amazing title win. Uh, the moment was minor, superficial detail, on another otherwise Cessnit day at Reading, their relegation to the championship was confirmed. The future of the club, staff, players plunged into uncertainty. Ten days later, Reading Women announced the return of becoming semi-professional in operation. Um, the moment was also telling, demonstrated of e Evans Eto's a fiery loyal character regarding the conditions. She has said, it's been a tough year is the overriding cave as Evan speak on the phone from her family's house in Canada. I thought a soft chuckle com, com, accommod, accommodizes the word every time there is an undeniable tone of relief in Evan's voice as we used in past sense. Um, so you can see here a picture of both Gemma Evans and Dina Cooper after the 3-0 loss against Chelsea, what caused their relegation. Um, and also, that cost Man United the league, so thank you very much. Um, four months earlier, Evan's grandmother passed away from the long-term battle of dementia. Evan spent six months prior to making a weekly five-hour round trip between her full job time with Reading and in Wales to be a caretaker, giving her mum so, so much time, needed time off. Um, on Monday, before the Reading's final day showdown at Chelsea, Reading... Uh, Evan's uncle, her grandmother's son, passed away. His birthday fell on the Saturday. The day Reading slumped to defeat. Obviously, playing football those 90 minutes is always in the back of my head. But it's my uncle's birthday. But I keep willing myself just to perform. Evan says, give everything you can to this team and forget everything else. Just focus on the football. Um... He has also said, in all in terms of recruitment, I, I massively agree with what Kelly Chambers has said, but I also think as a team, we did not produce, so we can't really blame it on everything. Still, when you're limited on money, you can't recruit the top class players. You can't recruit Bethany England, is what she has said um, on, the, on there. So... Um, Yes, she has had quite a lot going on, uh, which is understandable. Um, thoughts on Forest Green having women caretaker manager? I think for me, it's not the fact that it's a women's play, a women who signed it. I just think what's more weird is why would you want to sign a caretaker manager, knowing at the fact like you're in pre season. Um, it, it personally doesn't make sense to me. So, um, gr great to see that uh, women are being appointed into the men's game. But we need to also look at as well as what's the point in signing the caretaker when it's pre-season. I, st I, it just doesn't make sense to me, and that could really disrupt them coming into the season ahead. Go for Forest Green, great that break the barrier. Are they famous for vegan food? It's it's not necessarily about vegan food. I think they're just... I think it's about the, the environment and stuff like that. That they're famous for. Um, Maze, when Evans plays, will she play a full nighter? Good question. Probably most likely she would play as in the full nighter if she was to play. 
Um, but again, it depends on the injuries, etc., uh, etc. Et uh, thank you so much as well, Ian. I really, really appreciate the kind words. Um, hey there, Rushmore Sparkle. Thank you for coming into the chat. Hope you are well. I'm still keeping my eye out on the Manchester United women page just in case they do announce anything further regarding Gemma Evans, if they say anything else. Um, but they haven't. They have been relatively quiet, considering. Um, but we'll show the picture of Gemma Evans in a Manchester United shirt. Um, and they put it as meant to be. Uh, she d- Don't get me wrong, she probably is a nice person. I- I'm not going to obviously discredit it. She looks like a nice person at all, but I just don't think it's the right signing to go ahead with. But we need to look at in terms of the club, we need to be a bit more ambitious of what what we're ideally doing. Because um, realistically, we sh- <sighs> realistically, I, I don't want too many relegated players, if, if that makes sense. Um, and there was even... A, 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 um, a statement here by Soccer Donna, a reliable uh, Manchester United women's sources. Well, a, man, a, a reliable women's football sources. Man United have announced their first summer transfer. The Red Devils signed Welsh international Gemma Evans. Uh, did not give any details regarding contract period for the 26-year-old centre cent- defender. Most likely, she's going to be probably signed on a two-year deal plus an option to extend. That's mostly what Manchester United do, especially with the... Um, especially that we don't really sign many uh, sign many long-term deals. Mostly are two years. If they sign in January, it's two, uh, two, two and a half years. I think it's only Leticia you signed a three-year deal. Um, and hopefully we extend her contract soon. And there was a question here, a good signing for the Champions League group stage mission. So you can see here already not many people, well, there's only, we don't need relegation players is what has been said there. Um, I actually want to show you a picture of uh, Gemma Evans as well because she was actually... Um, She's actually got a fringe. I don't know what she's done with that fringe, but um, if I can find it, she must have got rid of it, to be fair. To be fair with you, she must have got rid of it uh, pretty recently because this is what um, Gemma Evans used to look like this season. Uh, this season just gone. Um she had a fringe there, she didn't suit it. Um, Manchester United has signed Wales international defender Gemma Evans on a permanent deal following her departure from Reading. The experienced defender, who's had over 50 caps for Wales, was ranked third highest in the WSL for shots blocked last season. Um, and then, yeah, so um, the news has been broke out as well by Pride Female Football News 2. Okay. Um. Thank you very much, Reese. Appreciate that. Thank you as well, Ravi. Appreciate that. Um. Which other positions of women's football? I've already mentioned it earlier, from Reese. But the ones that what I said is we need full backs. We need easily two full backs. Need a CDM. We need a striker. So there's three positions straight away. So that's four signings if we're gonna get to. Like two fullbacks, Maze makes B-Tech, Emily Sande sound like Jermaine Genus. That's how good Maze is. <laughs> uh, how good is Evans at one v ones? She seems okay. Our uh, one v ones, but to be honest, um, the one v ones are more down what Letizia does. Um, we don't want to have too many. We don't want two centre backs who can do the same thing on the pitch. If you get what I mean. Uh, just because I think that doesn't do the world of good, um, not in the slightest. Um, so as I said, I will look at the Wikipedia for Gemma Evans before we wrap up. Um, Gemma Evans is a Welsh international footballer who plays as a defender and forward for the Wales national team. She plays for Reading. Um, she's played for Cardiff City. Fifty-two appearances, four goals. She's played at Yo. 
Yeovil Town, which Yeovil Town are currently in the National League. Um, 22 appearances, one goal. He's played at Bristol City. Um, 51 appearances, two goals. And Reading, 30 appearances, zero goals. Uh, Evans played for Cardiff. Uh, City women from 2015 to 2017. She joined WSL side Town on September 2017 along with her international mate. She signed for WSL Bristol City in 2018 and then she signed for Reading women in 2021. Uh, Evans competed for Wales in the qualifying in the Euro 2016. In 2017 she played in the 1-0 win over uh, Katsan and Pasanesia in group stage one. Um, so you can see here, these are the career statistics uh, for uh, being in the WSL. You all town um, for one season, she played 18 appearances um, in the league. Uh, in the WSL, she was averaging out between 12 and 20 appearances for Bristol City in the league. And then in Reddy, she had... Um, she actually hardly played this year to look at that. Um, she only had eight appearances in the league in total. And eight appearances, that's not really that good when you look at it. So it makes me wonder if she had a fair few injuries last season. But if you're going to look at the WSL table whilst we're at it as well, I'll do that. Let me just check I've got the right one. Okay. So here's the WSL tables. Every single time Gemma Evans has played for each club. So Arsenal, uh, so this is the 2018-19 season uh, when Arsenal won the league. Uh, Yoel Town was to, uh, got relegated. What a bad, um, actually, it actually isn't a bad um, goal difference. When you do look at that, because she did that, there was actually sixty goals that were scored, but they conceded forty nine. Uh, they only had two. Oh, that was points. They had a minus three points there, so I'm presuming they had point reduction for whatever reason. Um, and then we'll look at twenty nineteen. Uh, Bristol City finished in tenth place, uh, with nine points. And that was the season when the beautiful Liverpool got relegated. Um, it's absolutely beautiful all. Uh, and then in 2020, uh, as we've seen here, Bristol got relegated out of the WSL uh, with 12 points. Birmingham City sniffing around that relegation zone. Reading was actually a mid-table team here as well, so... Um, it just really shows that the investment has not been there whatsoever. Uh, Reading, again, a mid-table team uh, when Evans did play, make a lot of appearances. 22-23 season was the season really... Uh, Re Leicester, Reading got relegated with 11 points. Regardless, I think they were out anyway, I, I probably presume. Uh, it did go right till the, the last day of the season. Um... You make so-called professional pundits sound like amateur. That's how good you are. Thank you. Um, May she must be playing with Kerry Holland in the Welsh team. Probably most likely she probably will be, rather. Um, May does this free show what Matt Skinner is like when getting players in? Um, Matt Skinner apparently said that he doesn't have much say in terms of signings, which I don't really believe in the slightest, if you want me to be honest. Um, but I think it does really show the, the nature of, of um, the club, just because I think we should be a lot more ambitious, especially knowing we've got the Champions League. It's not as though we're automatically in that group stage either. We're in the playoffs, and we do need to do our best to get out of the playoffs so we can get into the group stage. Because if we are to be in that group stage there of the WSL, I mean, of the the Champions League, it it really really works because we will go automatically into the knockout stages of the Conti Cup, 
Um, unless I'm gonna actually show you the Champions League f- as well. Hey there, Vincent. Thanks for coming in. Hope you are well. Um, so I'm just gonna bring up the the Champions League. So the Champions League starting a bit later this year. Um, so I'm gonna show first of all how this all works in terms of the uh, the Champions League. So so here's the Champions League. So you, the, the ones who are automatically in there, it's Chelsea because they've won the league in the WSL, Bayern Munich because they've, they've won the league um, at Germany, um, Lyon because they won the league at France, and Barcelona because they won the league in uh, Spain. So, if we're going to have a look now into the path two, um, the path two here, there's Lavia Prague, there's um, SE Rossengard and AS Roma, and then there's all the... Is this the, is this the right one? <sighs> this does not seem right at all. Bear with me one moment. Ah, here you go. So, um, here's the league path round two. So we, so we're not in the round one, which is great. Um, the round one it is quite big. So there's Arsenal in there, Juventus, uh, Brunby, IF, Minsk, Paris FC, Frankfurt, Levante, twelfth. Um, I'm not even going to pronounce that one. Uh, Valangera Football, uh, FC Solanco, Srum Vlads. Why are all these so complicated to spell? Celtic, um, Carvaz and Shiran. Don't even bloody ask. Um, and then you've got it here with um in the league two in the round two. So these all have to play against each other in round one, home and away. Um, to get into the round two, so um, that's already been confirmed. Who's going to be playing in the round one against each other, and then we're in the round two, so we could play any of these here who are in round one, <clears throat> and then we could play Wolfsburg, PSG, Real Madrid, uh, Sparta Pra, uh, Hacken, and we've got us, of course. So, even that alone, without bringing in the League Ones, that's going to be a very difficult task, um, who we could be playing against. Um, I don't think it's as easy as what people do genuinely think. And if you're going to look here at the round one draw of the Champions League, um, 20th versus... I think 20th will go through. I think Levante will go through. uh, Juventus... Um, Frankfurt, um, Paris FC, Arsenal, Celtic. Um, th- to be honest, I don't know about the other two at the bottom out of SE Minsk or uh, uh, Valanca football. Um, so I know they're split up into each group. Um, so they've all got to play against each other. And I think the winners after that have to play against each other to go into the League Two round, which is very very complicated so the best ones out of the, of the round one are going to go into the round two are going to be played against us uh potentially um i'm very well thank you vincent got uh got to where you look at the moment when you said you look like the color wallaby have you been affected by philip schofield no more schofield please you okay reese <laughs> uh hopefully united can qualify um it's not that I'm making mistakes. It's very hard um, um, to uh, pronounce names. So, um, yeah, with that, we will wrap it up. Thank you all for coming on to watch the uh, show to confirm the transfer of Gemma Evans. If you are watching it back, please let me know what you think in terms of the signing of Gemma Evans. Uh, is it a good signing? Is it not? If it isn't, why is it not a good signing? Um, 
I will be live tomorrow now. I will be doing my weekly transfer show discussing all the latest Manchester United news, uh, what's been released in the last week. So have a lovely night all. Take care. Bye-bye.